Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. And in this video, we are going to look into a very important service provided by AWS that is AWS Parameter Store. We will see how AWS Parameter Store helps us to store parameters inside AWS environment and use it dynamically inside your application. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. Pretty simple agenda. So we are going to look into AWS Parameter Store. So here first we will quickly have a recap of what exactly is Spring Cloud Config. We have already seen that in the last video in the Spring Boot playlist. After that, we will see what exactly is Parameter Store and how it helps us. And at the end, we will have a quick setup and demo and we will see how we can configure that inside our Spring Boot application and, and fetch our configuration from AWS Parameter Store dynamically. So let's get started with the first one Spring Cloud Config Recap. So if you remember in the last video inside Spring Boot playlist, we have seen this particular architecture of our Spring Cloud Config. Well, Config Client is our Spring Boot application which needs configuration parameters and it fetches it from Config Server. And Config Server connects to a GitHub where we actually go ahead and store our config and fetch the details from GitHub and feed it to our config client. So this is basically something that we have seen in this particular video. So you can go ahead and check it out. It's recommended to check that video out in order to understand this one. Now if I go back over here, then this is basically the application that we have seen in the last video where we had this particular controller where we were pulling this simple configuration from Spring Cloud Config Server, right? And here in the application.yaml, we configure it like this. We'll say optional colon config server and we will give the path of config server over here, right? Simple stuff. So it's kind of a spring config we provide over here. And we made use of an actuator refresh API to refresh this particular configuration by using refresh scope annotation, simple stuff basically. And there was this particular config, spring cloud config server we have created in order to connect to GitHub. So here, if you see in the application.yaml of this particular server, we had this particular config server git URI. This is basically a quick recap of what we have seen in the last video. So you can just go ahead and check it out. But now what we want to do, we don't really want to make use of this particular GitHub because I don't really want to store my configuration inside GitHub. What if I'm running my application in a cloud native environment, let's say AWS or Azure, right? Let's say I'm deploying this particular application in AWS, then why to go ahead and connect to GitHub and fetch the configuration? There should be some service available inside AWS itself, which will help us to store our configurations and fetch it dynamically without making code changes or redeploying your application, right? So that is when parameter stores comes into picture, right? So parameter store is a service provided by AWS, which will help us to store configuration parameters and we can go ahead and access it inside our Spring Boot application. Now here, if you see when we make use of AWS Parameter Store, we don't really need a config server. So our config client is this particular Spring Boot application. But let's say it acts as a config client because it needs a configuration parameter, right? And there is no server basically. There is no server associated over here. We can go ahead and directly connect to AWS Parameter Store. But how is this possible, right? We cannot really go ahead and connect to GitHub over here. We needed a server. But here we don't really need it. Here what we need is we need something called as a Spring Cloud Starter AWS library, right? So your Spring Boot application will have this particular library, which will make it easy to connect to AWS Parameter Store. So this particular library basically acts as your config server. It's not actually a config server, but it avoids the need of having config server and we can directly go ahead and connect to parameter store. So here in this case, we don't really have this server. So this server will be eliminated and inside your config client, we don't really need to go ahead and connect to this particular server because we don't really need this server in the first place. So let's go back over here and let's quickly go through this theoretical definition over here. So AWS Parameter Store or AWS SSM Parameter Store is a fully managed service that allows you to store, manage and retrieve configuration data and secrets as a key value pair. It provides a centralized, secured and versioned way to manage environment specific settings like database URLs, API keys or feature flags. It, it can be anything basically. You can use feature flags to toggle your functionalities inside your application and you don't really need to redeploy your application in order to toggle that, right? That is when parameter stores comes into picture. So now if I go inside AWS, so this is basically the AWS console. I have logged in by using my root user 
and here I can just go ahead and search parameter store. So I can just go ahead and click on this particular feature. There we go AWS system manager parameter store. It is used for secrets and configuration data management. And here is how it works. You can just go ahead and create a parameter, specify the parameter type and values and reference the parameter in your commands or code. Simple stuff basically, right? So you can just go ahead and create a parameter from here. We will just create it in a moment. So what we can do, let's go back over here. So we have seen what exactly is parameter store and let's quickly jump into the demo part, right? So let's go back over here. So now this is basically your server. This is basically your client, right? But now in this case, we don't really need this client or this server, right? What we need, we need a Spring Boot application. So let me just go ahead and quickly open this particular application. So I have just created this particular application by using Spring Initializer. So this is basically the group. This is basically the name I'm giving over here. All other settings are basically the default ones. And I have added this particular dependency because we need to add a API over here in this particular application. So you can just go ahead and generate and open this particular project inside your IntelliJ. So if you see over here, this particular application do not have much, only a main application. And if you see over here, we have this particular POM file, so POM.xml basically. Here in the POM.xml, what do we have? We only have this particular Spring Boot Starter Web. Now, if you remember in this particular config client project, we had this particular configuration where we imported configuration from where? A config server, right? And what did we had? We had this particular Spring cloud starter config dependency but now for parameter store demo we don't really need that what we need we need a dependency that we discussed which one this particular dependency spring cloud starter aws dependency so let me just go ahead and add it so this is basically the dependency that we are looking for so spring cloud aws starter parameter store this is basically the dependency this is basically the version that we need over here after that if you go back over here then what we did we added actuator as well inside our Spring Cloud Config Client project, right? So this is needed in order to enable our refresh API, right? So I will just go ahead and add it as well. So that is basically your pom.xml. Now, if we go back over here and let's go over here and let's add a new file, let's say application.yaml, right? And in this application.yaml, we can add the configuration now. Now let's go ahead and try to add a similar configuration, right? So we can just go ahead and copy this. We can just go ahead and add it over here. Now let's not worry about the profiles over here. This is basically the application name and this is basically the configuration import, right? This configuration we have imported for config server, right? But for parameter store, we don't really need this. Instead, we can just go ahead and say AWS parameter store and we can just give the prefix of our application. Let's say my app over here. Now this particular prefix comes in handy when we actually go ahead and store our configuration inside AWS environment, right? AWS parameter store basically. So that is our configuration. After that, what we need, we need this particular refresh API. So let's go ahead and add it over here. There we go. We have added it. All right. So after that, what I will do, I'll just go ahead and create a new package over here. Let's say controller and let's go ahead and add a simple controller as we did in the last video. So let me just go ahead and copy this controller. In this controller, what do we have? We have a simple API to fetch a config. So what I will do, I'll just go ahead and add it over here. So this will just return the value of this app.name. And we can just go ahead and add a simple app.name, let's say a default value. So let's say app.name over here and let's say application. Right, simple stuff basically. And after that, if you remember, we also need something called as a refresh scope, right? But refresh scope is available in Spring Cloud dependency. So if I go back over here in the cloud config then you have this refresh scope right and here if you see it is coming from spring framework cloud dependency what we can do we can just go ahead and add that dependency as well so let me just go ahead and add it over here so i'll just say spring cloud starter and let me just quickly refresh this particular maven over here there we go now we can go back over here and just say refresh scope and that's it right so our controller is basically ready now how we can connect this particular application which is running locally inside my Spring Boot to parameter store. So now at this moment, if I go ahead and start this application, let's, let's try to bring this up. Then if you see, we are getting some error related to parameter store because it says AWS parameter store my app does not exist. So basically our application is not aware how to connect to AWS parameter store and it's not able to find this parameter store. 
what we need to do we need to connect our locally running spring boot application to aws first right how we can do that we have done that multiple times so first we can go ahead and specify aws region and second thing we need is a we need a client id and secret id right how we can do that we can just go to aws go to iam and we need a user to connect it right we have done this multiple times so if i go inside user or rather i can just go ahead and create a new user let's say let's say chetan parameter store let's say next now what do we need over here we need a parameter store permission so i can just go over here so here i can just go ahead and select amazon sss read only access and i can just say next and let's just go ahead and create the user over here there we go our new user is created and here inside this particular user i can just go ahead and create a new secret key let's say command line interface because we will just go ahead and enable this through cli after that i will just say next and here what i will do i will just say create access key so this is basically our access key and this is basically our secret key now here what i will do i will just go ahead and open my terminal over here let me just zoom it a bit so that it is clearly visible and here i'll just say aws configure and here in the access key i will just paste this particular access key that we just copied over here let me just copy it again to make sure and i will just go ahead and paste it next is basically secret key so let's go to secret so let's go back over here let's copy this secret key as well and let's paste it over here let's keep the default region as ap south one and let's complete it now our aws is configured right now what we can do we can just go to parameter store so let me just search the parameter store again now here first of all i will just go ahead and change the region to ap south one and i will just go ahead and add a parameter over here so i can just say create parameter now here i will just give a path over here so i'll just say my app slash app dot name right because this is basically the parameter we want app dot name and our prefix is basically my app so i'll say my app slash app dot name right so that is basically something i'm giving over here we don't really need to give description we will say standard we will say string type it's a text basically and here you can go ahead and specify the value so here we can just say my parameter store app right simple stuff and once we do that we can just go ahead and create a parameter so our parameter is basically created right simple stuff now now let's try to go ahead and start this particular application now if you see our application is basically started and here if you see this particular application is basically running and here if you see it is loading property from aws parameter store with name slash my app and here if you see now let's try to load this particular url we'll just say config over here so let me just go to browser i'll just say localhost 8080 config and here if you see our app name from config server is basically application now this particular name is coming from our local so if you see this is basically the name it is loading so let's see what exactly is wrong over here if you see over here in our application.yaml we have this particular configuration import so i guess we need one more slash over here because it is my app slash and our key right my app slash and our key so that is what is missing from what i believe so let me just go ahead and stop and rerun our code let me just go back over here and let me just try to refresh it so if you see over here now we are getting it from a parameter store that means we are able to successfully connect to parameter store now if i go inside this particular configuration and let's try to change the value of it right edit and here i will just add and i will just go ahead and update this particular value and i will just say updated over here right and let's try to save these changes now if i go back over here and try to refresh this it will not get updated and you know the reason why right because we need to make use of this refresh scope that we have added over here now right because it will not get refreshed until you go ahead and refresh it now let me just go ahead and pull my postman over here and let me just hit this particular endpoint so if you see over here our app is updated and app.name is basically updated now let's go back over here and let's try to refresh this so if you see now our configuration is refreshed simple stuff basically so that is how you can simply make use of a parameter store right now if you see over here this particular application is running locally and we are connecting it to my aws environment by using our 
AWS configure basically our AWS CLI, right? So we are making use of AWS CLI to connect it. But when it comes to your actual applications, which are let's say running inside cloud native environment, you don't really need to pass it over here. You can just go ahead and deploy it to let's say EC2 and you can just directly go ahead and connect to parameter store, right? Simple stuff basically. You can do similar stuff on application which is running inside your AWS. You can just go ahead and deploy it to EC2 and it will work in the same way. So go ahead and make use of parameter store in order to store your parameters and update them dynamically inside your application without restarting or redeploying your application, right? That is basically your AWS parameter store. So we have seen setup and demo as well link of this particular code you will find in the description you can just go ahead and check it out so that's basically it in this particular video so we have seen aws parameter store we have had a quick recap of spring cloud config we have seen parameter store and we have seen setup and demo as well so that's basically it for this particular video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about aws parameter store that's it for this video see you in the next video